Hello, I'm going to be showing you guys a little bit about Kerbal Space Program in version 1.22. This is Realism Overhaul with Real Solar System. I installed through uh, CCAN the, um, let's see, all the Realism Overhaul mods, and I included FASA in my install uh, for this. I'm just going to be showing you a quick little design in uh, getting a rocket uh, from uh, the original build. I'm just going to be sending a probe to the moon. Here's a new sandbox. And uh, due to the difficulty on normal, I'm just going to leave everything as is. I have remote tech installed as well, and I have uh, tech life support, but since I'll be using the probe, I'm not going to be doing anything weird, uh, so I'm just going to leave everything on normal. All right. Thank you, Mr. Gene Kerman. I got it. Tech life support. I'm good. Kerbal alarm clock. I'm not going to need them. Close that. I'm just going to go ahead and go into the vehicle assembly building and start building my rocket to put a little probe and land it on the moon. Thank you, Mr. Werner von Kerman. So for this, I'm just going to uh, have a little survey which I believe is this one and this will be the the goal is to get this core onto the surface of the moon to start off let me just go ahead and add a procedural tank color it gold which will be this is going to be used for my RCS fuel diameter I'm going to bring this down to 0.1 I think that'll be enough but as I go through and design and see what changes I'm going to make. Here's going to be my main fuel. Set that diameter. One, there we go. And for the engine, I'm just going to use the Astris engine. And let's see. Uh, and also, for this, I'm going to need a light antenna. I'll use the Reflectron KR7 uh, just for balance purposes. There's two. And now I just want landing gear and RCS thrusters. Here goes the quad. Uh, it's uh, you know just for this, that'll be fine. I want four. Set up the engine. I use HTP. Enable the RCS. Uh, now with this, not always the uh, even though I have the RCS, the engine is activated on all four thrusters. Uh, even when I load the craft, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. I don't know why. Uh, let's see for that. I'm just gonna have gray scale and some landing legs. Let's go. Just want four of those guys, and that should be good. Uh, just because, for the sake of this, let's see. Retracted. There we go. So now this, I need aerosine and 50. This has to be a structural or a service module. Aerosine, there we go. Fuel, there you go. Fuel is now very stable for that. Landing legs will do just fine. And that should be the probe. This will be my craft that I land on the moon. I've got 4,606 meters per second. And if I check to see what the thrust to weight ratio for the moon will be, more than plenty. So for this, let's go back to Earth. And now, uh, so this will be the stage that will uh, once either I have circularized already around the moon or this will actually just get me while I'm on an impact path to the moon it will get me to slow down enough and land. So here's my decoupler, decoupler. add another two tanks as well one is going to be for the RCS and the other one is going to be for my main fuel tank. Let's change this to mu. I like this for my third stage. And let's increase the diameter to three, increase that to three as well. For this engine, I shall use, um, might use a lunar ascent module. Let's just see how the delta V is for that. Let's see. Oh, not enough. Way too long of a burn time. Um, actually, for this, what I will be using is a mixture of 
these, oh here you go, the Agena vacuum engine, and I want five of these. So there's that, and then symmetrically let's put four, and then I need to separate these out. So there's these two engines, separate those out, and oh, let me uh, increase that, there we go, that's better. So there's that engine, not that engine, and not that engine. So there we go. Separate and separate. And let's remove all tanks, add that, and there we go. So that'll be for my, this is after I've already intercepted the moon. This will get me uh, the rest of the way to the moon, and it should be uh, coming down and impacting the moon. All right, so from there, just f for safety, just in case the payload fairing doesn't work, I add another decoupler as well because sometimes it's a hit or miss on whether or not I can actually get it to separate. So put those on the same and add, I like the look of the delta fairing. And for this, just going to right click and increase that to diameter four so it's one long smooth cylindrical looking shape I think I'm a little off but that is okay and actually because of what I want to use for my main stage I'm going to increase the diameter to I think uh, might be five or six I will be using the SLS uh, one they use there you go my four engine mount there we go, increase this, that'll do fine, and just for the heck of it, just build that so it matches the same diameter of eight. Perfect. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my liquid hydrogen so that way I can see how much fuel and delta V I've got. Uh, plenty. And let's increase this length to a lot. So because this is going to get me a long way to the moon, I actually do not need the thrust weight ratio to be uh, more than one because I want all the extra fuel I get. I'm going to be relying on the boosters to help get me most of the way through the atmosphere. Let me activate my hangar extender to get me to be able to see what's going on. All right, sea level thrust to weight ratio is looking a little high right now, but for this and the decoupler, and I'm going to use the Pyros boosters because they look the cool. They look cool, and for this, they think it'll be perfect. So there we go. Let's separate all these out. Let's see. There you go. My thrust to weight ratio is way plenty high. So what I do is I will increase this until I get my um, thrust to weight ratio C level for. Uh, boosters as well to be plenty low enough and as you can see I've got over 20,000 meter meters per second of delta V which is way more than enough to get me to the moon and land on the moon. I think the actual Apollo 5 or excuse me the Apollo missions had less than that. I want to say they had around maybe 19 or just over 20. I honestly don't know. But for this that'll be perfect. Uh, let me just bring this up so I don't hit the launch pad once it loads. Bring this up just a bit more. There we go. Uh, just so that way this looks prettier, I'm going to add another procedural tank and this will be my A. It's going to store some extra fuel and it's going to provide a nice little nose cone. Let's see, smooth cone. That's perfect. Let me zoom in. Top zero bottom diameter is going to be not too much yeah it's roughly the same size as the my little boosters here increase the length uh, five looks good and just so that way the textures match i shall put it on whatever colors line up ah there you go that looks good that looks pretty good for this 
and so it looks oh and then i'll go ahead and add the fuel kerosene there we go 1.27 is more than plenty as you can see i've got lots of burn time there now all i want to do is just make sure that i have some clamps and make sure that this thing will not completely destroy itself on the launch pad so add that there add two more down there and just to help with stability i'll put those these two up there and that should provide enough now all i want to do is just work on fix the staging over here make sure nothing will collapse on launch so let's see what i have here let me looks like i need to raise this up just a tad bit more there you go that'll be good enough so let's see, first stage I'm going to have these two engines are going to ignite, then once they're lit all the clamps are going to let go, and then sometime after launch uh, those are going to let go the, once the boosters run out. Uh, let's see, then after the boosters I actually want to have the shell, I want those to decouple, and then after some time after those finally, uh, once the core runs out I'm going to separate these uh, stack here from the third stage from the core stage. I'm gonna have those two engines ignite, then um, which should complete the rest of the burn to get me to the moon. So there's those two, the symmetrical, there's those two, the symmetrical, and there's another one symmetrical. And when those run out, that's gonna release. And then I'm going to have this final one uh, finally ignite. Um, it looks like I forgot to add some my RCS thrusters for this bottom stage so therefore I should have more control and I also need a power supply oh, too much there you go four will be enough let me go ahead and add some HTP and let me make sure all right RCS is enabled engine config sent uh, to HTP which is the fuel that I have in this tank yep HTP more than plenty this tank, HCP more than plenty, and again, let me just double check these, that should be good. Now I may have to reload this just because sometimes the RCS doesn't work, so what I do is I will have uh, this craft, let's send it, I'm just going to call it just a Lunar Lander Craft, there we go, sorry for the loud clicking, and there we go I think this is my craft I'm just gonna go ahead and save that let me click launch to make sure that everything is working okay and then this is a uh, this is a nice simple craft to get you to the moon and land to the moon it is not quite enough to get you back to earth just because the uh, the stage that I have just set up where the landing legs are they're not quite enough uh, you can build a craft big enough in Kerbal Space in a realism overhaul to land and get you all the way back home uh, but for this I'm not going to so let me just test it out real quick on the launch pad so I can ignite the engines and of course they all ignite shut those down and the launch clamps um, and let me just get rid of the clamshells and make sure that the RCS is indeed working properly oh, a little bit of lag Hit RCS. So let's see. It looks like they're working. They all right. Looks like they are working. So now let me just go back and oh, I didn't realize that those engines were still going. All right. Uh, so it looks like they're working. Let's revert the flight. Let's revert it back to the launch. And now I'm going to set up a nice little transfer window uh, to get me to the moon. So let me just uh, zoom back out, go to the map, and to get to the moon, I actually want the moon to be, wow, actually right where that is. So let me set that as the target, and what I'm going to do is let me get my relative inclination down to zero. Oh, looks like this could actually not work out more perfectly in a brand new game. So whenever you want to get to the moon in one shot, you want the moon to be anywhere from... Uh, this 45 degree angle here or this uh, this line here down to here so sometime in this little piece of the pie um, so you can see that I actually I've overshot uh, this inclination a bit so let me just time warp further around get the moon you can see where it is in orbit give you a little bit be uh, better idea of where you want your burn to be 
and so there you go I'm at 45 so now let's just go a little bit past it and there we go so now all I'm going to do now is wait for this relative inclination to get back down to about 0.5 that's where I want to launch this from Oh, it's coming down fast. Oh. And once I get to point five, there we go. Perfect. I'm going to stop there. Uh, you can see I've got my smart ASS over here. Here's my orbit info, my surface info. Here's my rendezvous planner and my delta V stats. Um, so just for the sake of launch, I'm just going to use my rendezvous planner and the surface info because I want to be looking at my vertical speed when I take off. But just uh, with the normal launch, uh, I just want to, once I get to about 1,000 meters per second, I want to be tipped over about 45 degrees. And there we go. We've got a nice lift off there. And oh, past the clamps. And then, of course, between 0 and 100 meters per second, I just slowly tip over to 5 degrees. And then from there, I'm just going to keep tipping over, uh, keeping my heading over here at Smart ASS at 90, and just keep changing the pitch over. Uh, sometimes uh, I'll do it here. I'll keep the roll. I want the roll to be at 90 as well, because as you saw, I did not add any separatrons for this, so I do not want my boosters to be running in. I'm sorry this is dark. You can see that uh, here's my rocket here, barely showing. And, uh, and as I'm just going to keep continuing on to launch, I'm just going to uh, continue to roll over. Uh, because as you can see from the Delta V stats, I've got a really long burn time, but I'm not going to do any physical time warp until I've gotten rid of these booster stages, just so that way my game doesn't lag too much, because running it with OBS does tend to lag quite a bit, and I usually get about 40-ish frames per second with all the mods installed, um, but once OBS just comes into the picture, things just kind of go kaput. Um, but this should, yeah, so the booster stage, uh, or with the boosters will get me uh, nowhere near orbit, that, but then once just the core stage has ignited, uh, then that is actually enough to get me most of the way to the moon as far as delta V requirement wise. Um, and it works uh, really, really well. Um, again, I'm sorry for the uh, lack of light. I don't know what to do to increase that. Uh, but this is a, a really easy flight to have and this is a rather easy build uh, just to get to the moon and land on the moon. Of course you can add all the uh, science uh, to the uh, module to get you to the land. Uh, this rocket has more than enough delta V to get there, land, do some science, and transmit it back. Again it's just a different, uh, you have to design a completely different rocket if you want to return. So now that I'm going fast enough, uh, you can see my orbit is up there. Now that I'm high enough in the atmosphere, I just set my orbit to prograde, and I get rid of the force roll because... Um, or actually, I want that back down to 90, just so that way my uh, two boosters don't exactly hit. So then once these run out, then I'm just going to physical time warp. Uh, I believe we should be seeing the moon over the horizon over there in just a little while. You can see on the nav ball, it's below the horizon. Um, yeah. And so there we go. Apoapsis has definitely climbed way above 140 kilometers where the atmosphere is. And separate. Beautiful timing. And there we go. Uh, my game has uh, sped up quite a bit. So now that it has done that, I'm just going to do some physical time warp above 100 kilometers. There's a separation of the fairings. And then once I get a little bit higher and get over into uh, hopefully the day side, I need to activate my uh, communication so that way I don't ruin uh, don't ruin this entire flight by not having communication with the probe. Okay, I've got a little bit of lag. Let me switch over to the map view to make sure I'm still good. And it looks like yeah, where the moon is and where I'm launching from Cape Canaveral, uh, you can kind of see it here. There we go, this yellow dot is Cape Canaveral. 
Oh, there you go. Yep, U.S. Cape Canaveral. There we go. Plenty high enough. And because I set uh, when I had it on the Smart AS for the surface, it was good. Uh, my inclination started off at 0.5. And now when I just kept that at 90 until I hit the pro grade, it went down to 0 0.30, which is perfect for getting to the moon. I won't be far off uh, an equatorial, uh, or not, an, it wouldn't be an equatorial orbit, but it uh, is nice and perfectly in line with this here moon once I get there. So there we go. So I've got another minute to go on the burn. Sorry for all the zooming out. So let me just slow this down here in a second. Oh, there we go. Looks like uh, this stage with an apoapsis, or oh, well, ooh, it's gonna should hit well over ten. And periapsis is above. So unfortunately, I'm a uh, you know not very uh, helpful when it comes to uh, getting rid of debris in orbit. But with this flight, it's um, I'm just glad that we can actually get rid of some of the debris by just simply deleting it. Oh, his Kessler surgeon went to wreak havoc in my universe. <laughs> Thanks to my piloting skills. All right, there we go. So that's separated. There we go. Should have a good separation. And I'm going to go ahead and ignite those two engines, and I should be free. Yep, there we go. Uh, so it looks like I didn't quite hit the uh, day side, and actually it's going to be a while before I hit the day side. So uh, from here, I'm going to activate my... There you go, Reflectron KR7, no target, Earth, there we go. Ah, one thing I completely forgot to do was put on a battery source, but that should, I should have more than plenty for this mission, so I've got 15,000 already, so this should last me well enough, but if not, just put on a couple of either extra battery packs, or I like to use those uh, plutonium, whatever they use on the uh, Voyager probe, it uses plutonium there we go let me time warp so this should be perfect for getting to the moon I will set this focus there we go and now all I do is wait now it looks like our separation at closest approach is coming down rather nicely and then once we get close because I think there you go the altitude yeah 350 uh, so once this gets to around 250, that's when I slow it way down, or slow the time warp down. And there we go. So now I should be coming up here on the moon in just a sec. Yep, yeah, there we go. They're approaching. And... Oh, oh almost. Look at that. Perfect. Uh, so now, what I would do from here is, since I have these extra two engines in the way I have set up, my engine uh, configuration on the stage. Uh, I've already used up two of these engines because they only have one ignition. Um, so yeah, those are out, but I still have these three to go. So there you go, one ignition, and whoop, and there should be one ignition in the next stage. Um, let me check my RCS, make sure it's working. Activate that. Yep, it's working. Let me just kill rotation with that. And there we go. So now I'm going to warp to the moon. Make sure my battery is still good. Oh, no, my electric charge is dead. All right, so for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and enable the unlimited electrical cheat just because I forgot to add any type of solar panels or uh, any type of uh, electrical supply. There we go. All right. So it says I have a connection, and let me see if I still have control. I do have control, that is perfect. So I'm sorry I forgot those, but normally I just tack on a couple of uh, other things to help me get going. Um, so let's see, I want that to be a retrograde, and what I'm gonna do is from here, I'm just gonna set up a circularization burn uh, at the periaps. Uh, I'm just gonna eyeball it. And so, there you go, warp to periapsish there we go let's see time to periaps uh, doesn't say so I'm just gonna zoom a little closer and looks like I'm there so there you go it's going retrograde and then as you can see by the nice dark shadow boy I'm just doing absolutely everything in the dark 
Uh, so since I've got a long burn time, and this is more than enough to circularize, let me just go ahead and activate the next stage. Spacebar, I've got a 1.2 second delay here. There we go. And there we go. I've got a nice little retrograde burn going. So, uh, physical time warp. And there we go. So this should be enough to get me in a nice circular orbit. Oh, wow. I just... Uh, oh, wow. I don't know if you guys saw that, but I had another encounter with the moon. Now, what I'm going to do is, after this circularizes, I'm going to uh, wait until I can have connection with the bright side of the moon. And... Uh, so that way I can land in the daytime, because so far I've just done everything at night. There we go, apoapsis, near circularization. There we go. And let's see. There we go, let me cut it there. Almost perfect. 1.6 by 1.4 million meters. Alright, so I need daylight to be on this side, so I'm just going to go ahead and back out here, and I'm going to time warp all the way around. Now depending on the time of the game, you saw that this was a new game, but if you're playing a game doing the uh, story mode, or the, excuse me, the career mode, or the science mode, it just depends on what you're doing. So depending what time of day that everything is on, um, or when you decide to, or when you get to the moon once you have the enough tech tree, or if you're just doing it like me, playing in uh, sandbox mode, you can, depending on where the Earth is in the orbit around the sun, it'll change uh, when you can launch from Cape Canaveral on the day side or the night side. But it looks like here that I've got plenty of daylight, so now I'm just going to come over here and I am going to get ready to initialize another burn. So there we go, I should have retrograde. My craft is getting into the right orientation. I'm going to activate my next stage. And it looks like I've got no connection because I'm on the dark side of the moon. So I'm going to time warp till I get to, until I get some signal. And it looks like I've got some signal. Ah, look, you can see the Earth off in the distance. There we go. Full throttle. Space bar. And there we go. Start my deorbit burn. So I should be able to get a nice landing somewhere over here, but I'm going to try and aim for one of these craters because it's relatively flat, but because it's realism overhaul, the surface of the moon isn't very bumpy like it is in the stock KSP, uh, or the MUN moon, however you say it. I am a I call it moon, but uh, this should land just nicely. There we go. Periaps is dropping. And I want it to be uh, not quite under zero if I can, but as close or just a little bit above a zero kilometers, uh, just because I think the average surface is maybe around 10 kilom 10, yeah, yeah, 10 kilometers, because I don't want to smack into the moon just because I've got such a long burn time for the final stage. So, and also you also can see by the orbit, it says I'm gonna crash. Um, but, of course, if you've played stock KSP, you should know that from landing on other planets. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead and hit spacebar. That'll separate, and I'm on the, I've got, now I'm on the final descent. So now I'm just going to warp here. And there we go. So let's take a look at this craft. And I don't know where the other stage went. Long gone. Or it's like right behind me. I don't know where it is. Oh, there it is. Found it. All right. So now with this, because I've got such a really long burn time, uh, and I am actually coming down for the moon at a really steep angle, uh, I have no idea what they did in the Apollo missions. Um, but for this, it looks like I have a decent burn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my... Uh, surface pitch is going to be over at zero. My heading is going to be at 270 based on what the nav ball or yep is saying. 
because I want to get rid of my surface velocity as best I can. Switch that over, and now I'm just going to physical time warp. Oh, got a little bit of lag there. There you go, it's caught up. Yeah, every time it runs with OBS, it goes really, really slow. So there we go, looks like we're coming in rather nicely. Uh, vertical speed, 323. Let me increase my pitch just so that way I don't go down too fast. There we go. Got 11 minute burn time. Hmm. So based off of what I'm seeing, this should be a successful landing. And I really wish I could record these things. Or not record, I really wish I could edit these videos because that'd be fantastic. Because I've managed to actually build the Apollo, uh, doing the Apollo mission with the uh, FASA parts. With uh, just a little bit of hiccup, I had to mod some of the parts. There's not enough food for the astronauts and there isn't enough, um, uh, not enough electricity on board for them so I had to mod, it's not mod, but I had to just uh, add some extra parts and the RCS doesn't work either for the FASA parts which is which is really annoying but I just overlaid them on top but if I can ever get a video of that up that'd be fantastic alright well it looks like my so I've got 20 kilometers to go looks like I'm really bleeding off a lot of speed let me bring it out of physical time warp because it is really destroying my frame rate speed up a little bit there we go let's jump that back down to zero real quick because my vertical speed was going way too slow and it looks like if I land this successfully I will have a little bit of fuel to actually get this thing back up into an orbit so if I could put another craft uh, in space similar to how they did the Apollo mission I could just rendezvous with that again uh, and actually get any of the science to return home if I pl uh, if I chose to So vertical speed coming down nicely, and then because this is the Astris engine, uh, yeah, I have an unlimited amount of ignitions, but I can't throttle it. Uh, but the lunar descent engine that they have with the fast parts uh, has three ignitions, and it is throttleable, which makes it really, really handy uh, for these types of uh, for this type of mission. Uh, hence, <laughs> that's why it's the lunar descent engine. And it looks like I am coming down really nicely. Let's see for this. I'm just gonna put I'm just gonna set that to there. And it looks like there you go, 4.8 kilometers up. I am bleeding a lot of speed, and I'm gonna cut the engine there. So I'm gonna time warp this just a bit. And hopefully I can stick the landing. See, go. Let me reignite the engine. So I want to come down fast, but not too fast because this is can be really hard to misjudge, especially if you leave the engine off for too much. It becomes unstable. You can see where it says very stable there. Uh, it becomes unstable, and if you're too low to the ground uh, and you can't ignite it in time, that's why you saw me use the RCS thrusters. Uh, and just so that we can get it to stable again. It looks like I'm getting really close to the ground now. I can see it. There's my shadow. Let me cut that. And then from here, I'm just going to uh, tap this just so that way I've got a decent amount of. Uh, decent speed coming down, but I can also keep my fuel stable. Alright, so my surface horizontal speed is 
practically nothing. And whoop, I slowed down a little bit too much there. There we go. So this is coming in really nicely. So not the best landing, not the not going to be the smoothest landing, but uh, yeah, yeah, it'll work for uh, the purpose for this purpose. And of course, it's I landed in a bumpy place, but as you can see from the moon, even though I landed in the bumpiest part. And last ignition, and there we go. I have successfully landed on the moon. Uh, and it looks like I've got yeah, just under 2,500 meters per second. Uh, let me turn that off. And there we go. I have successfully landed a probe on the moon. There's my lunar lander craft. And there we go. And I think with the amount of delta V that I have left, I do have enough to... I, I believe I can escape the moon, but at most I can definitely come back and set this up for a decent orbit. I hope you guys found this entertaining, and see you in the next video.